Welcome to Good Enough with the Trauma Therapist, a podcast dedicated to empowering you to take control of your life, learning valuable strategies for healing and looking at mental health through a trauma-informed lens. Get ready to feel empowered and confident in managing your symptoms. And now, here is your host, licensed clinical social worker, EMDR therapist, and certified clinical trauma professional, Jamie Vollmuller. Welcome to Good Enough. I am your host, Jamie Vollmuller. Hope you guys are all having a happy week. It's a short week this week. We got Thanksgiving coming up. Today, I think we're going to talk about why it's important to have a therapist that challenges you. And I'm really passionate about this because I've, as you guys know, been to lots and lots of therapy. And I see lots and lots of clients that have been to lots and lots of therapists. And one of the biggest things that I think where people get stuck in therapy, by well-meaning therapists, is part of therapy, right, is that relational repair. So it's part of our job as therapists to help you see your worth, see your value, and feel seen and heard, right? That's a very big part of our responsibility. For me, it's also really important to help my clients feel empowered and to take back control of their lives. So if you have a therapist that is co-signing on everything that's going on in your life and everything that's happening to you and being like, yeah, yeah, it's everyone around you, even if it might be, it doesn't help you. For me, that always just made me feel less in control of my life. When I went to people who told me like, or looked at me like, oh, poor you, like anytime anyone ever looks at me like, oh, poor you, oh, such a trigger. I would rather, (laughs) I would rather be known as a survivor and someone who overcame than someone that people pitied, right? And when you go to a therapist that's just co-signing on all the things that have happened to you and saying, oh, poor you, you poor thing, it just reinforces those feelings of hopelessness. So if you're at in therapy, you should be seeing a therapist. Your therapist should be challenging you, not necessarily that the people in your life aren't doing the wrong thing. It's not that you're responsible for everything that happens to you, but you are responsible for putting yourself in the same situation over and over again so that these things keep happening to you, right? And until we own that, until we own our own piece that we are adults now, right? A lot of things could have happened to our life as children. We might have been abused. We might have been in really uncomfortable or unsafe situations. But in adulthood, you have the power to change your environment, to change your situation, be that at home, at work, wherever. You are the one in control in adulthood. It might not feel that way. And to most of my clients, and even me most of the time, I I feel like, oh, life is overwhelming. And I feel like, such a loss of control. But when you look at what you do have control over and what you can change, whether it's limiting interaction with the people who are causing you stress or um, not putting yourself in the same exact situations over and over and over again, or just not even responding to things in the, the same ways that you're used to, it helps you to feel more in control of your life and feel empowered rather than feel like a victim. I have never met a person who comes to therapy and wants to feel like a victim. I think that everyone wants to feel like, okay, something happened to me and it's validated, right? And that is super important. And I validate the heck out of my clients. I definitely do that. Like I was meeting with a client yesterday and we were talking about Thanksgiving and, you know, just one, one that has immense family issues. She's not going to the Thanksgiving with the family, obviously is – causing some pushback because anytime we try to set a boundary when we don't have boundaries, right? If you have your whole life operated in a way that you are selfless and you give to everyone else and you start setting boundaries, we have talked about this before, what happens is the people in your life who are used to walking all over you start to push back because They don't like that you're taking care of yourself. They're used to you taking care of them. And that's not because those people are selfish. It's also probably because maybe for them, you're the only person that really stepped up and put them first. But it is important for us to put ourselves first. And we can learn to balance our own needs with the needs of our family and our loved ones. And it's really important for us to learn that kind of balance. And that only happens if you're examining your role in every situation. 
your role in your life that these things keep happening to you. If you keep having bad things happen, then that's something that obviously needs to be addressed, right? But if you're not looking at what am I doing that's contributing to this? What am I doing that, you know, makes me a magnet for a narcissist? Like I work with a lot of empaths and empaths guys are people who feel emotions very, very deeply. They, they're bleeding hearts for other people. I am one of those empaths. Empaths have a tendency to attract people with narcissistic traits because we are so kind and giving and loving and we tend to overlook people's flaws. We tend to give people the benefit of the doubt and really try to understand human behavior. Like we, we constantly put ourselves last and try to understand everyone else. But if you keep putting yourself as the empath in those situations where you're being walked on and you don't stand by your own boundaries and you continue to sacrifice yourself for other people, yeah, things are happening to you. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, you are a victim in some ways. But what are you going to do to take back that control? What are you going to do to change your life? What are you going to do to prevent your kids from becoming victims like you were? And, and for me and for most of my clients, that is the motivator. It's why I work with parents now. Because for most of us empaths who love unconditionally, forgive unconditionally, and give so much of ourselves, to put ourselves first is not something that we can do with ease. But I know a ton of mama bears and mama dads out there who, when it comes to their kids, when it comes to their cubs, mm -mm, ain't nobody messing with that. And I think for us, it becomes a lot easier to work through our own stuff and look at our own patterns and go down memory lane and see the things that happen and how that affects how we see ourselves and the world now in a way that's really, really major. And, and we do that because we don't want to repeat those patterns with our kids. And going to someone who is not challenging you there, who is just reinforcing that, oh, poor you narrative, everything keeps happening to you, you have no control, and isn't helping you to learn to walk the line. Because there's also extremes of that too. Like I've, I've had people that have gone to therapists and just like cut everyone in your life out. Well, it's also really not helpful. It's also toxic, right? And you can't rid your life of every toxic person. You, you, you can try, but if you don't learn how to set those boundaries, and you might need to do that in the beginning. Let me just clarify. If you are someone who has been a victim of abuse for a very long time and are surrounded by people who do take advantage of you. It might be very well needed for you to take a break from those individuals in your life, for you to learn how to take care of yourself and start feeling comfortable setting boundaries. But that shouldn't be the goal long-term. The goal long-term is not to just rid our lives of bad energy. That's just nonsense. That's that's mythical thinking. It's, it's not based in reality. You're going to have a job where you're going to work with negative personalities. You're going to have friends that you know, you might not like their spouse and their negative personality. You can't cut every single person out of your life who is negative. It's just not going to work. You're going to be very lonely and very frustrated. But what you can do is learn to set appropriate boundaries with those people and learn to hold your own ground, even when you're getting pushback from people who are negative, even when they're guilt tripping you and trying to make you feel bad about you putting yourself first, when you learn how to stand your own ground, that's how you start breaking those patterns, right? When you stop sacrificing yourself for everyone around, everyone else around you, that's how you truly learn to stop being the victim. And you learn how to balance what your needs are with everyone else's needs and learn that when you say yes to something, this was really major for me. When you are saying yes to something, you are always saying no to something else, right? So if I am saying yes to a client to come in on a weekend, I'm saying no to time with my kids, right? And the empath in me might want to go in on that Saturday to see that client. And the empath in me has done that from time to time <laughs> if it's really, really, really needed. But I have to weigh that with, is this truly a need? Is this truly going to make that big of an impact? And what kind of impact is that going to have on my own life, on my own kids, on my everyday functioning? And if I don't do that, then I can't be the best therapist for my clients. And if I'm going there because I have to, because it's an obligation, I'm also not going to be effective as their therapist, right? So these are the things that we should be learning in therapy. <laughs> 
Stick around after the break, guys. You've been listening to Good Enough with Jamie Vollmuller. So much more to share. I'm hoping to share it with you. Thank you for listening to Good Enough with a Trauma Therapist. This is your host, Jamie Vollmuller. If you live in the states of New York or Missouri, we'd love to work with you. New Yorkers, give us a call at Long Island EMDR at 631-503-1539 or visit our website at liemdr.com. And for those of you living in Missouri, please call Brave Counseling and Psychiatry at 573-825-6441. Visit brave-mo.com. Welcome back to Good Enough. I am your host, Jamie Vollmuller. Today, guys, we were talking about learning what your own patterns are in therapy and the importance of going to someone who's really going to challenge you. And therapy really should be a challenge. We don't make growth without any struggle, right? There's this, I can't remember exactly what that saying is, guys, but if we're not challenged, if we're not moving outside of our comfort zone, then there's not going to be any room for growth because there's, there's nowhere to grow if we're just staying the same. So really what therapy should be is a place for you to learn to safely challenge yourself with the support of another human that's going to help you do that in baby steps, right? And and what could that look like? So I think is important for you guys to understand. So with my clients, one of the things that we do is really looking at like, okay, if this situation happened with your family and they're all terrible, and I've had clients say that to me, like, everyone in my family is crazy. Yeah, so is mine. But they're also still wonderful people. There are wonderful people who are all crazy. And I don't know many people who are <laughs> who are not crazy. We all have our own kind of crazy. That crazy might differ from family to family, but every family's got their crazy, right? And we love them anyway. What I do with my clients is help them see what their role is in the family and what patterns and labels that they've been assigned so with one client, we were talking about, you know, the role of scapegoat, which for me, you know, growing up, that was very much my role. I was always the bad one. <laughs> um, was it intentional? It's just kind of how things happen in family systems, right? There's always, you know, the golden child that or the perceived golden child and the perceived scapegoat. There's always the problem child in almost every family I've talked to. But what happens when you're the problem child is that even when you're not the problem child, when you grow up and be an adult, you still assume that everything's your fault. You still assume that everyone's going to blame you. You still assume that somehow you are responsible for everything that happens in everyone's lives, uh, which is why I think so many of us that are the scapegoat in our family become the like rescuer, the savior of the family to kind of undo that, like to kind of like prove our worth as we are the good ones. We are good. We're innately good, right? When you're doing that, that is just going to be unattainable for most people. It's going to be very unattainable to ever meet the standards that everyone else is holding for you. So what what I help my clients with is figuring out who they want to be perceived as. What is most important to them? What is most important to you? Is it most important to you to be a mother? Is it most important for you to be a career woman? Is it most important to you that you know, you're kind and loving and giving. And that is the perception. And and is the perception more important than the reality, right? Because that's a big part of it too. Because I work with so many people who are such kind, generous humans, and they don't feel that way because they're not seen that way by some people. I mean, the people that know them in that capacity obviously see them that way. But trying to convince the entire world of whatever persona that you want to put out of yourself is kind of a, a, a losing battle, guys. Um, Casey Musgraves has a song where she talks about, dang it, what is the name of that song? I cannot remember. But basically, it's about how you can't be everybody's cup of tea. That's what it is. You can't be everybody's cup of tea. And why would you ever want to be? Because that basically just means you're a chameleon. That means you are the person that everyone else is wanting you to be in every single moment. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel happy when I'm faking my own emotions or placating to what I think other people are going to want to hear. And it also comes off really ingenuine, right? If you meet people like that, that are chameleons, a lot of people call those people fake, especially us New Yorkers. We don't like fake people. We like people who are very direct. I think that's just a New York thing, but it's, it's important because when people are presenting 
different faces of themselves depending on who they're with. It makes it very hard to trust people. It really, really does. And I think that the people who I know of that I've worked with or that I have in my life who are chameleons, they're not chameleons because they're bad people. They're chameleons because they really just want everyone in the world to love them. And they don't yet realize that that is an entirely unattainable goal. There's no way that every human being is going to love you. There's, there's just none. You know, there are people who will say negative things about me because we don't accept every insurance about under the sun. And I've had people call my office and tell me how horrible it is that we don't take every single insurance. Well, as a human being, I would love to take every insurance under the sun and help every human I possibly can. As a business owner, that's not an attainable goal. So if I hold myself to that standard, I'm never going to be happy with myself or my business or the way that I see myself because the, the every person in the world doesn't see me that way. But any person who knows me on an individual level, I think, knows that I'm a person that genuinely cares about other humans, who genuinely wants to help people, who cares about making the most amount of impact that I can. And I have big aspirations to open a nonprofit and IOP and all of these amazing things where we can help people that I can't help right now. It's part of the reason we have an internship program so that we can help underserved in our community who can't afford our services. We have plenty of people that come to us. Long Island EMDR for free and get services. Anyway, to say all this to say, you're never going to be everybody's cup of tea. And therapy is a place for you to learn to love yourself regardless of what other people think of you. And that I think is the most important thing that we can learn to do in our lives is to accept ourselves for who we are, flaws and all. Flaws and all. Because if you accept who you are, flaws and all, and you know that you are always acting with the best of intentions. And that doesn't mean that we always make the right choices. But I do believe that most humans are making the most, like the best choice that they can at the moment with the information they have at that time. At that time is super important because I can look back at my life and say, knowing what I know now, I would have done this differently or that differently. But I can only do what I can do with the information that I have and the resources I have at that time. And if you are a human who is beating yourself up for your past or what you have or have not done in your lifetime, I am here to tell you you have plenty more life to give and that once you learn to accept yourself and be your true authentic self, that the people who love you are going to love you even more. And the people that don't, don't matter, guys. They don't matter. Because the people that don't love you for who you are, aren't your people. They're not your tribe. They are not the people that are going to have your back no matter what. And honestly, those are not the people that we should be placating to. That is, I'm very strong in opinion about that. Like most New Yorkers, I have very strong opinions. But that is one of them, that we should be our authentic selves. And that the people who love us are going to love us more fiercely. And that the people that don't, you know, if you only love me because I'm a chameleon and I'm nice to your face, then you don't really love me. You love the person that I am when I'm performing in the way that you approve of. And that's not really the love that I want, or it's not the love that I want my kids to feel. It's not the love that I want for any human. No human should have to feel like I'm only good enough if. That's that's called conditional love. Those are not the people that I'm trying to surround myself with. And it's not the people that you should try to surround yourself with either. You should be surrounding yourself with people who want you to do well because they love you. And even if they don't agree with everything that you do, there are plenty of people in my life who do not agree with everything that I do. That doesn't mean they don't love me. That doesn't mean they don't support me. They might have different ways of getting there. They might think the way that I do things is crazy or wrong, but they still support me. And because I'm comfortable in my own skin, it doesn't matter if they make those comments because I'm not going to fly off the handle or get super insulted by it because I'm comfortable in my own skin. And that is my hope for every single person I come in contact with, that I can help people to feel comfortable being themselves, to feel comfortable no matter where they are in the world, that they feel at home, no matter who they are around, because they know in their soul that they are a good human being and they are good enough as they are, which is a very hard thing to self-actualize and it's something that I work on every single day and it's something that my clients, my, my team, everyone I know is just working on being a better human and the measure should be trying to do better 
right? If you are trying your best to live a good life, then you're doing enough. You are doing enough. My name is Jamie Vollmuller. You've been listening to Good Enough, and I want to remind you that you are good enough, no matter what anyone says at Thanksgiving table. (laughs) Have a happy Turkey Day, guys. Thank you for listening to Good Enough with the Trauma Therapist. We appreciate you listening. While our host may provide some personal and professional advice, we want to remind you that this show is for entertainment purposes only. Each individual situation is unique and Good Enough is not a substitute for mental health treatment. If you need a therapist and are located in New York, or Missouri, feel free to reach out to us at liendr.com or brave-mo.com.